I know some of us don't like kids. When content creators like myself come out here to create awareness, especially to those who are still back home in Africa. When we say before you embark on this care worker job visa that is going on now, before you embark on the journey, you have to ask questions. You have to make a lot of research because all that glitters is no gold. The way some of these agents we, we present it to you is absolutely totally different from what you are going to experience when you arrive the UK. Those video clip that I want you guys to see today, this video has been going viral on social media and it has to do with a Nigerian sister who came from Nigeria. According to her, she paid almost 10,000 pounds to get the COS. On getting to the UK, this is what she met. Anyways, my wonderful and amazing viewers, if you are meeting me for the first time, you are welcome to my channel. My name is Joanne and I'm based here in England. What I do on this channel, I talk about simple life reality of Nigerians, Africans, Asians in the UK and in the diaspora at large. So if you are interested in such content and you are yet to subscribe, please click on the subscribe button before leaving this very video and do me one more favor click on the like button of this very video okay if you can share this video share it you don't know who this video is going to benefit just share it and for my returning subscribers how can i start this video how will i continue this video without saying a very big thank you to every one of you thanks for your support thanks for always coming back to support this platform i sincerely from my heart i appreciate it with that being said, guys, see, I'm not going to say much because I'll be presenting the clip in a minute. We've been talking about this a lot, even on my channel, on this channel. I've brought a lot of videos relating to this. Sometimes some of you will be like, oh, Joan, you like bad news. It's not as if I like bad news. It's not as if I love bringing you bad news. I'm just here to create awareness. I'm here to expose us, to open our eyes. So some of these things that are happening out there, you sitting on your own or sitting in your house watching this video now or you are watching YouTube or TikTok, see, bet me. Believe me, you can't go everywhere on social media. You can't cover all the news. So it's some content creators like us that are creating awareness to some of you. So stop saying that uh, we are trying to discourage people or we, are, we like spreading um, bad news. No. We bring life lesson here so that you and I can learn. Some of these news or stories that I'm bringing you on this platform, I myself am learning a lot from it because my eyes have been open to some of these things that are happening out there, which ordinarily, if I just sit in my house without researching or searching for some of these things, I won't even know what is happening out there. So please, sometimes try to appreciate content creators like us who are bringing you life realities, life experiences of other people. Anyways, I don't want to waste much of your time. I'll put a clip so that we will listen to it. And then at the ending part, I'll also be back. Let's listen to it, guys. There's a big scam going on how people are paying thousands for skilled worker visas for jobs that don't exist. I should be in a position of helping, not receiving aid, says one Nigerian woman. Fraught with emotion and speaking to us anonymously in the narrow corridor of a food bank, she's now destitute despite being promised a job in Britain. Blessing, not her real name, told us she arrived in the UK three months ago. She says she paid someone she calls an agent in Nigeria £10,000 to arrange a job as a carer in the UK. But when she got here, she found there was no work for her. Her story is part of a wider problem, revealed in a Sky News investigation this year showing how the skilled worker visa system is being abused with middlemen allegedly being paid huge sums of money to arrange jobs in the UK as carers that do not exist. Image Blessing, not her real name, arrived in the UK three months ago on the promise of a care job. Many of those who can't get work are struggling to survive, turning to food banks and even sleeping rough. Blessing is now reliant on handouts. 
At a food bank in a Nigerian community centre in Greater Manchester, she is given a shopping bag of basic supplies. The shelves and crates are packed with donations of bread, cereal, tin tomatoes, and familiar African items like palm oil and beans. Blessing says, I've always provided for myself. I'm a very hard-working, diligent person. So for me to be here depending on people to eat coming to the food bank to get food isn't okay with me. I don't feel happy about it. It makes me feel I'm less of a per person. I should be in a position of helping not receiving aid because this is not who I was back in my country. It makes me feel as though I'm a fool. Blessing asked us not to contact the British company which sponsored her for fear of repercussions, but showed us her passport and other documents supporting her account of what happened. I ask her why she didn't make the application herself. With some irony, she says, I would have done it myself, but there are so many frauds on the internet in Nigeria, you don't know what's real. Image Blessing paid an agent in Nigeria £10,000 to arrange a job as a carer in the UK. It makes me feel as though I'm a fool, she says. Blessing says she knows others who have skilled worker visas only to get here and find there's no work waiting for them. She sighs, there are so many. Dozens. I met a lot here and so many are still coming after I've come. There's a big scam going on. Shameful is she. Mary Adakug, the founder of the Nigerian Community Centre in Rochdale, says those on skilled worker visas now needing support is a big issue that is increasing her workload, something she describes as shameful. Image Mary Adakug, the founder of the Nigerian Community Centre in Rochdale. About 15 of the 35 to 40 people who generally come to the weekly food bank have skilled worker visas, she says. We are overwhelmed, she says. People are desperate. It's so worrying. She paints us a picture of those she has seen, a grown-up man crying like a baby. Children crying without food because their parents can't work to support them. No houses. No job. This is alarming. She sold everything she had. As we finished chatting by the front door, two women scurry past with their bags of food. It's only afterwards we're told their story, that they were too ashamed to speak to us. One of the women has hit rock bottom and, with nowhere else to go, lives on the bus. Community volunteer Jones Adikub says, Last week we gave her bread and tuna because that's what she can eat easily without cooking or warming. Image at the food bank, shelves and crates are packed with donations. Image there are also familiar African items like palm oil and beans. Now homeless lady on the bus is yet another person who paid an agent in Nigeria to arrange care work in the UK, we're told. Mr. Edicube says she did some work when she came in. Initially they gave her one shift a week which is 12 hours a week. As time went on there were no shifts. According to what she showed us, she was offered a full-time job as a carer. And now she's sleeping on the bus. He adds, she's in a bad way. She can't go back home. She has nothing at home. She sold everything she had. It's not been easy. Another couple, we're calling them Alan and Joyce, have come to the UK with their young son. We've changed their names but they showed us documents which prove they're in the UK on skilled worker visas. Image, Alan and Joyce, pictured from behind to protect their identities, have come to the UK with their young son. Joyce says she was also promised work as a carer and Alan was able to accompany her because he is classed as her dependent. Alan says it's not been easy. I had to sell my car, sell my property, get a loan and took a lot of risk to, to raise the money. Under the terms of the skilled worker visa, they can't work in any other job category and are limited to 20 hours a week under another employer in the care sector. Often, home care providers require access to a car and permanently switching sponsors is almost impossible. Joyce says it's very difficult because most jobs you want to get, they will first of all tell you that you've got a sponsor from somewhere else. So maybe you should go back to that place to get your job. That's what they always say. 
We are begging the UK government if they can look into it, even if it is not skilled work, if they can give us another sponsorship or any other work we are ready to do. For our survival. Over 170,000 skilled worker visas issued in a year. In the 12 months to March 2023, 170,993 skilled worker visas have been awarded. In the health and care sector alone, grants have increased over two and a half times and represent over half of all work visas issued in the same period. On the job with the lowest entry requirement, care workers and home carers, 40,416 people were awarded visas in the year to March 2023. In different parts of the country and across different communities, we are hearing the same thing. In Bradford in West Yorkshire, people in the town's established Pakistani and Bangladeshi communities speak of their concerns about people struggling to eat and put a roof over their heads having come to the UK to work. Spreaker This content is provided by Spreaker. Welcome back, guys. You've seen the video for yourself. I really do not have much to say. A word indeed, they say, is enough for the wise. Guys, permit me to end the video at this point. If you are yet to subscribe to my channel, this is the right time. Click on the subscribe button. Thank you very much again to you. Yes, I mean you my returning subscribers. May God bless you for always coming to support me. I do not take it for granted. I'll see you in my next upload. Have a wonderful day. Bye.